not easy to find these anymore, mate. Well, they're probably the MOD gadget, it says it on the box. And while you used to be able to get these on a lot of airsoft stores, uh, eBay or whatever, they're actually not letting you sell them. Uh, now, I was very lucky that an army surplus store I know were pretty much giving them away to get rid of them. So we were looking to get a couple of boxes and uh, we thought it's time to show you what's inside an operational 24 hour ration pack. And the other thing we'll do is, because Gadget's got some experience of using these, some, let me see, it was some time ago, um, we're gonna t tell you about what you do with each component as well, because some people make some quite strange mix-ups <laughs> mix up with these. So I'll take it out. So you have a menu, this is normally at the bottom, but I put it at the top just so I can have a look. There's an interesting thing about that menu, Tom. Is there? There's been a menu on the back, there's a questionnaire, yeah. for feedback to win some prize or other. <laughs> they, actually, they actually care what squaddies think now. Before you were just given stuff. And oh, these, have got, it, you know? these have got, one well, other thing we can talk about is how much better these have got since oh. you started using them. I, I mean, when I first did my basic training, they were phasing out the old tinned ration packs, which were heavy, uh, you know, and like just not convenient. And they went to foil pouches for nearly everything. But back then, it was designed for a ration pack for fighting a probable war in Europe against the Russians, even though the Russians hadn't been around for 10 years as a credible kind of like enemy. Yeah. But they assumed you had access to a lot of water. So but there was loads of stuff like porridge in there and soups and lots of things that took time to make and you yeah. had to boil up water, etc. Whereas combat experience for the last 10 to 15 years in Iraq and Afghanistan has drastically changed what you get in one of these. So without further ado, should we go through it, Tom? So I've got this lovely plastic bag with, a, with what looks like a brew kit in it. It's a brew kit, and nicely, it's also a reusable zip bag, so you can yep. put all your rubbish in it. Okay. So you're not carrying bin bags around like we used to, you know, to be able to steal stuff in. So again, mostly water using stuff, but we've got, let's pull a few random ideas out. We've got tea, and it's a named brand rather than some random. Um, must be quite nice to. Yeah. Come back to a named brand. Yeah, which is good. Because, you know, in the past it used to be like lowest contractor bed, random tea by somebody. Kenko coffee, um, some spearmint chewing gum. I never really bothered with the chewing gum, just clean my teeth instead. I think, I think they're kind of assuming you, know, you haven't got a toothbrush with you. Yeah. Uh, you get a spork in there with like the these actually, actually a spoon roll. These are actually pretty decent ones, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Oh, this one's they're actually fairly better. solid. Oh, this one's a bit flexible. I've had better. You get some coffee and tea whitener. Again, I always just think that's a bit grim. Weirdly, the ration packs we used to have used to have um, tea instant white. Now, you could have oh, tea God, instant yeah, yeah. black, but it took a magnifying glass, a pair of tweezers, and a bloody long time. <laughs> I just quite like tea instant white. It had a really strange, really weird chemical taste to it. Yeah, it's ever so odd. Uh, it was like really orangey looking as well. Sugar and sachets. Now, I always think it's weird that these come in like paper sachets, because the last thing you want is wet sugar, because yeah. it does get damp. And then lastly, without duplicating things that are in there, Quite useful alcohol antibacterial wipes, yep. which are not only good for cleaning your hands, but that's a bit good for getting cam cream off. Oh, brilliant! Oh, okay. Uh, which is a knacker sometimes to get off with just soap and water. Cool. So that's the brew kit. Yeah. I've also got. Oh, I've got boily some, sweets. I've got some delicious boily sweets, which don't look too melted. They're all right unless you crunch them when they turn to like glass in your mouth. <laughs> and, like, it's like give you loads of mouth ulcers. Oh, really so what would you do with these? Would you shove them in your pocket or something? Uh, yeah. To be honest, like just put them ready to eat somewhere in a pouch. Yeah. Right in just, a pouch pocket. Sort of just munching them as you're walking along. You want to kind of put your snacks where you can grab them. So yeah. you'd have like your chocolate bar. When you get these ration packs, they'd often give you like ten of them in, to your to your section or whatever. A big box of the things. And you fish around them and you do it arguing and swapping about what you want to eat because they won't always get the menu you want. And quite often, again, back to the old ration packs, you discard a lot of it. You generally take your main meal pouches, the sweets, the snacks, anything you could eat on the move. You do a lot of swapsies with your Loads open. of swapsies. And always at the end, there'd be a big pile of fruit dumplings and butterscotch sauce, <laughs> which is the worst dessert the army has ever, ever made. Um, it's, the one, it's the one you can't eat this week yeah, for 10 minutes. And there'd years. be a fight over chicken and her pasta, whatever, like, yeah, all the time yeah. because that's what people wanted. So the boy leaves in a pack. In a pocket, just for munching. Oh, your favourite. Biscuits, biscuits brown. brown. Oh, I really like biscuits yeah. brown. Biscuits AEB for all terms of bread. Now eating these, um, they would the original ones were designed to bung you up when you're on exercise because if you're drinking dodgy water or okay. you have something, the last thing you want is to have diarrhoea or some sort of bowel disorder. So yeah. making you slightly constipated, you're, you're more effective if you're not you're going to the toilet. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, sure. So they would bung you up. So if you eat a lot of these, be careful. Ration packs are designed so to So squeeze your peanut butter, which, yeah. you, which you could put on your... You could put it on there. Let's say, again, that's an improvement, peanut butter on biscuits, because before they give you like a chicken and her pate. Oh, God, that stuff was disgusting. Yeah, and that's what I said before in the Lithuanian pack. The British ones are swimming in grease. And I guess also you can, yeah. you can put that in your pocket. Yeah, and, and, and just, eat it. And just eat it on yeah, the go. If you need the energy. Pretty much just like this. 
Again, Nutella type spread, it's not actually Nutella, but it's a similar sort of thing. That's also nice, in a little toothpaste thing. Yeah. I have been known just to square that in my mouth and eat it. I, I think mean, that's probably one of the kind of open day games. Sort of on the we have, and we'll just get this, run through the snacks and we'll get into okay, the yeah. We've got a little raisin, raisin they've got snack, snack bar. bar. So a bit of fruit, so they're you know, attempting to get some vitamins into the lab. odd, because recently they used to have things like Yorkies in there. They seem to have taken them Yeah, out. they have. I think they were just melted, again. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, it makes more sense. I even thought about that. Actually, a chocolate bar is a <laughs> Afghanistan or Well, if you look at our, our recent Lithuanian ration pack uh, tasting, our chocolate bar had melted in 28 in degrees. In a British summer. In a British summer, yeah. so God knows what it was like in Afghanistan. Now, they're great. Right? They are like baby puree. I think they pretty much are, aren't they? Yeah, but I had one of those at uh, Humber Airsoft the other day. Oh, I was really you? flagging energy wise and feeling a little bit. And I've drank that much water. You get to this point where. You just can't process much from water. So actually squirting a bit of that into your mouth just... Oh, so look, well, there's, there's loads of variety there, isn't there? Loads of different yeah. tastes and, and things. Um, what have you got there? Ah, no, oh, here we go. Wow, that's a massive tin of nuts. A massive tin of salt. The tin of nuts I had today were half there. That's good, isn't it? But again, that's going to replace any lost salts. It's a different texture to eat. Yeah, um, so you've got sweet, salt, some savoury stuff. My only thing would be with that... It makes a bit of noise, so like if you're being in a tactical kind of milsim, you probably wouldn't want that in your weapon yeah, because probably, it's going to be a bit like maracas. It's no worse than a high cap. Probably pop them, stick them in your pocket. Yeah, again, I, I, I think I'd save that in my burger and eat those when I was. Uh, so not let's moving. do some let's do some drinkos. So we got a, a Viper Active. This is like a vitamin electrolyte. vitamin C electrolyte tablet. Yeah, quite yeah. useful. Again, there's no, but there's no sugar in that. So no. if you're getting if you're getting a bit sometimes if you drink a load of I've done some long 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 term endurance bike racing, yeah. and you get really sick of. Of sweet Just, drinks, yeah. yeah, really. That's quite nice. So that's going to replace your salts and any, yeah, clang out your. That mouth. is orange flavour, which is like quite pleasant. Now, I'm quite a fan of British Army hot chocolate. It's quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> I, I actually do drink it. I've got that much of it because, again, when you used to break down the ration packs, quite often the chocolate drink would get left behind by a lot Did of people. Did it really? Yeah, yeah. So I had dozens of them. Like, I used to also teach cadets at one point, so if I went on an exercise with TA at the time, and people were binning this stuff on like a two-week exercise, Brilliant. I'd keep it all in a big carrier bag, take it back and just give it out to my cadets because they didn't get ration packs mm. quite often. Now, the chocolate drink was great, and again, what I used to do when we had the porridge thing, and I'm oh, that'd be now, nice, yeah. I opened the porridge, put some of the sugar in, a bit of the chocolate powder, and you had like chocolate sugary porridge, and then you break your oatmeal block into it. That was the best breakfast <laughs> ever, but it took time to do. Um, so, we've also got... What used to be orange screech has now moved into about 17 different flavours. Is and it I tropical there or raspberry? This is raspberry. Raspberry's pretty good. Okay. My favourite is the um, grapefruit, which we don't unfortunately. Oh, I love the grapefruit one. I haven't got yeah. I've got sweet cherry. Yeah. Now that's a lot of drink flavouring already. When you're looking at, you're mixing one of these with like a couple of pints of water. Yeah, well, they so. go, basically go straight into water. Oh, with 375 millilitres. Yeah. That's roughly a Coke can's worth yeah, of water. Yeah, or you chuck it straight into your water bottle. Yeah. Or whatever. Uh, lemon drink. See? Cool. I like the lemon as well, actually. Because Lemon's these have been, nice. so this is, you can see very much, these are very much shaped by experiences in hot places. Yeah. So you're getting a lot of fluid and a lot of, and a lot of different ways because actually, I'm not mad about drinking plain water, so I tend to yeah. have to have squash or whatever in it to get me to drink. The last ancillary would probably be better off shown with. Yeah, we'll keep that to the one side. We've got a very useful pack of pack of tissues for various uses. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll let you guess why you're going to need those. Uh, no, I really, this is this is oh, these are, this is great. Tuna yeah, a little, little four pack of tuna. That's really yeah, nice, a lime tuna. Brilliant for a little munch yeah. as well. It's one of those things you can just eat as a snack or as part of a meal. That's fabulous, you know, isn't it? Yeah. It's so, I really am so impressed with these. And then we get onto the kind of. The, the big stuff. And these main foil pouches. Now these are interesting in their own right. Let's because just see what we've got what in here. Got. Oh, this... There we go, Ooh. so we've got toasted muesli. Oh, so that, yeah, again, that's something that you could have water to and you're awake with that. So that's yeah, it's a great Low preparation, but again, it does require water. Yep. A little bit like the old porridge. Interesting to see that in one so of these. Got, so for our main meals, we have... Okay. A bit of stuff. We've got beef goulash, no, big pack of beef, beef goulash. goulash. Yeah. Now the interesting thing about all these is you can eat them cold. Yeah. Uh, now, you're supposed to cook them using either flameless heater, blue it, hexy, or whatever. The other day I cooked one of these by putting it under my car windshield or an open day, and it was piping hot within about 30 minutes, yeah, 40 minutes. Yeah, it was really quite it's crazy. Gadge, how's your ration pack? Well, who needs hexy, Tom? Literally, this has been my dashboard in my car for about an hour, and it's hotter than a flame, flameless cooker. <laughs> and that's about well, boiling it would do it. Yeah, I literally have to hold it by the edges because yeah. it's red hot. So that's how hot it is today. Yep. Um, so plain rice to go with your goulash. Okay. We've got some ready-made, so you were talking about this earlier, Gadge, about having yeah. powdered soups. You now yeah. get a whole packet of soup made up. So yeah. you could just pour that straight down your throat. Because you the old to. soup was really powdery and wasn't particularly pleasant. It was a pig to make. You were cleaning a mess tin out, whereas you could actually just eat that out of the bag. Then, yeah, you? it's brilliant. And I love this. This is the uh, 
little bottle of Tabasco you get to spice up your food. Because people like different, because curry is quite often uh, an ingredient in a lot of ration packs. It was always a favourite back in the day. People would say it's not very tactical because you can smell it from miles That's away, but sod that tastes great. And then for dessert, we've got fruit cocktail and pineapple juice. It sounds a lot again, better than, but not, doesn't, not doesn't dumplings need, doesn't or whatever. doesn't need to be heated, you can drink yeah. that straight down. And there's yeah. a lot of fluid. So actually, there's a quite, there's a lot of fluid even in the main meal. So, so, I mean, so you get compared some... to the initial, but back in the day when you'd have a breakfast pouch, uh, a main meal pouch, and a dessert pouch, you're now getting five ready-made meals, pretty much. Uh, they're all pretty high quality. They're yeah, all pretty they're high all, calorie really as well. Quite tasty. These yeah. Guys, yeah. Now that's so that's your mains, like all your your food you can eat. And then if I just hold up a selection of those ancillary snacks. All of that in that box there. If you forget about drinks, off. No, let's not forget the lime tuna. Forget about drinks. Forget about sweets. That's all useful, and you can eat it pretty much straight out of the box. It's a lot better than having to make things up, add water, cook things in ration uh, in mess tins. Yep. You can see the army has learned its lesson it there. Certainly now. has. Now we're going to eat all this at some point on an open day and see what it actually does taste like. But will you tell us what your experience is with British Army ration packs or foreign ration packs? You've already told us a little bit in our future, for previous episodes. Yeah, and we know, we know we've got some viewers that have been to Sandy Shores, haven't we? Yeah, um, yeah if you served in Afghanistan or Iraq and uh, you were issued one of these, was it as easy as we yeah. think it's to use in those climates? We'd like to hear were there feedback. any snags? Yeah. Were, what was popular? What wasn't popular? What did people get rid of? We'd be absolutely fascinated to find out. I've been Tom Anvil Hibbard. And I've been Gareth Gash Harvey. Please like, subscribe. Leave a comment and we'll see you next time.